Today we're making an easy apple compote recipe. It is super simple to pull together. There's only five ingredients, um, all of which you probably have in your kitchen. So when you go and pick a huge batch of fresh fall apples, you're gonna wanna make a huge batch of this to use in cakes and cupcakes and in your breakfast oatmeal or overnight oats, but it's thick enough to use in your apple cinnamon rolls or I mean, really anything. You can put this in anything. I mean, it's just so versatile and so easy that it's, you can just keep it in your fridge for a couple months and it's just perfect way to enjoy apples even past their season. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. Let's get into it. Super easy. First step, peeling our apples. I've got a mixture of Gala's and Honeycrisp here. Um, you can use whatever you'd like. Um, of course, you know, a nice mixture, a nice variety is good for texture and flavor, uh, but it really is whatever you'd like. Um, you try, you want to try and use kind of crisp, tender um, apples. So, you know, your Gala's, your Fuji's, your um, Cortland's, you know, things like that. Um, and stay away from like, the Macintoshes of the world that make beautiful applesauce or apple butter, but maybe not necessarily the best uh, apple compote. These are tiny, and so you know I'm using more than you might if they were of a, I'd say normal size. Um, and then let's trade our peeler for a knife, and we're just going to slice our apples in half. And then you know I like to kind of line them all up. And then I start to, I kind of cut them in half, and then I slice out the core. So there's a nice flat bottom, um, and each one's about the same size. Well, it would be the same size if my apples were the same size, which they are clearly not. All right, now you wanna think about where your apple compote is going before you cut it, right? So maybe if you're gonna put it in um, apple cupcakes, you're gonna to wanna to cut them into smaller, kind of more brunoise, like a small dice. Um, if you are going to put it on top of ice cream, obviously that same cut would be beautiful, um, but you might want it a little thicker, a little bigger, um, some you know meatier pieces, if you will. Um, if you're gonna fold it into a cake, then you're also maybe gonna want some, you know, a bigger chunk, right? But it, it's totally up to you, so just think about the final destination for your apple compote um, before you cut it. But if all else fails, you can just cut it into a medium dice, which is what we are going to do. So, um, so my apples are really small. So it's just, I mean, it's not really blending itself to this, but I'm gonna cut each one basically kind of in half long ways, right? Which, you know, is going to yield me some some of the smaller apples are gonna yield a little smaller pieces than I'd actually like. Um, but you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I am gonna put these in um, cinnamon rolls. So I want, you know, enough apple in each bite, but not, you know, you don't want it to be huge chunks. Um, and so once we've done that, we're gonna go back and we're gonna cut kind of strips, if you will. Um, and then we're gonna cut them into cubes. So that's obviously how we dice. I'm gonna do all of them into strips, and then I'm gonna go back and cut them into cubes. All right, so now we're gonna take these. I've kept them kind of all facing this way to make it easier for me to slice them into the, the dice. But you know, you kind of just like corral them. There's some smaller pieces because of the size of our apples, but you know, they're really yummy in-season apples, and so we're not going to complain. All right, so we are gonna put our apples directly into our pot. So find yourself an appropriately sized pot. Um, I thought this was appropriately sized, but now I'm like, hmm, maybe she's a little small. Nah, she good. And then we're just gonna clean up here just a little bit. I'm going to, before I dispense with this, I'm gonna put my, squeeze my lemon. So it's about half of a regular sized lemon. Um, which for once I actually have regular sized lemons. So we're just gonna go ahead and squeeze this in there. Um, get yourself oh, a seed. That's fine, get it later. I'm not really stressed about the 
you know, any little things that fall in there. So, but if you are, put a strainer over top. And now we're gonna add our seasonings, if you will. So I've got granulated sugar and light brown sugar. You can use 100% of either. Um, I split it between the two because I didn't want that overwhelming kind of light brown sugar flavor. I want the apples to kind of shine. And then I've got myself a little bit of cinnamon here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put cinnamon. This of course is um, to your taste. So if you love cinnamon, you know, pour it up. If you don't, then just, you can even omit it. This would be a really lovely time to use my apple pie seasoning uh, mix, which is up there, uh, which is predominantly cinnamon, but it has a few other things sprinkled in there. So give it a stir. Okay. Now the sweetness that you desire, you might wanna add a little more sugar. Um, depending on the types of apples that you choose, right? If you have a little more tart varietals, then you might want a little bit more sugar. Um, if you have extra sweet apples, super in season, super sweet varietals, you might want to pull it back or maybe just add a little bit more lemon. Um, it's totally up to you. But I highly suggest that you, you know, reach your little paw in there and give it a try. And then you're like, wow, that's delightful. So, we're gonna go ahead and pop this on. Um, the kind of medium, uh, medium low, we want it to kind of, you know, that some, release some of their juices. We want it to start to simmer before it really fully boils. Um, and then we're gonna, you know, we're basically gonna cook it until our apples are beautifully tender. So it's just been simmering about five minutes. Um, and I've given it a couple stirs along the way, but you can see that it's released a lot of juices down there. Um, and that it's kind of bubbling and you know, our apples are looking kind of the same and that's good. We're just going to let them continue to cook. Um, the apples are going to soften, um, and that juice is going to thicken a little bit. Of course, we could thicken this with a cornstarch slurry. Um, if we wanted to have a nice thick, um, compote, but it's nice to, nice to keep it a little looser. So you have a nice, like that nice syrup quality to it. So we're just going to let it continue to cook. Um, I mean, it's going to take probably, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the variety of apples that you choose. Um, but it's just bubbling away and we're going to let it go. So it's been about eight minutes. Um, and you can see that a lot of the juices have evaporated, um, and thickened into this like nice syrup, right? You see it running like that. That's beautiful. So, but my apples are not quite ready. So you can kind of see that they're, you know, they're still a little crunchy. None of them are any, are translucent or anything. Um, and then some of that will depend on the apples that you choose, um, in your, in your mix. But um, I would like them to cook a little bit more. They're still a little crunchier than I'd like uh, without reducing any of that juice. So I reduced my pot, my heat to low, and I'm gonna let that continue to cook. Now I could cover this if I'd like um, to kind of keep some of that steam in there, um, which I just might do uh, if I can reach the lid to my pot. Okay, so we've uncovered and you know, a lot of the apples have softened. You can see that the, you know, the syrup has thickened again because some of the, they release a little bit more juices um, and you can see that they're nice and syrupy. Um, and then the apples themselves, they're this beautiful kind of crisp tender. Some of them are softer, some of them, are, you know, still have retained their crunch. Um, it goes with the honey crisp and we are excited about that. So we want to cool this quickly. So my baking sheet is already cold. And I'm going to go ahead and put, you could put parchment, you could put plastic wrap down, whatever you'd like. And I'm just going to go ahead and take my apple compote and kind of pour it out onto my baking sheet here. Now you can see how you would not necessarily want to thicken this um, with any sort of cornstarch or, you know, anything like that because it's already beautifully thick. It's got its own like saucy juices. As it cools, it will actually release a little bit more juice, um, especially as it sits kind of in the refrigerator. So um, we're going to let this, I'm going to pop this back in the fridge and let it cool down. And then it's, it's ready to try. We want to um, make sure this cools as rapidly as possible. So into the refrigerator she goes. And obviously that's why I pre-cooled my tray. So we just, we want to give her 
every be possible benefit. And that's it. Now we've made apple compote, we've cooled it down completely. Um, I just transferred it to a cute little jar. Um, it makes about a cup and a half to two cups, depending on how voluminous your apples are. But it's super easy, and now it's super versatile. So we can go ahead and actually top ice cream with this. You can mix it into a cake batter. Um, you can fill cupcakes. You can um, fill a layer cake with this, maybe with a little bit of caramel. I don't know, sounds awesome to me. You could use this in a trifle um, and just an easy kind of parfait. You know, if you want a little sweetness in your breakfast, you could pop this in your oats, um, maybe in my apple cinnamon overnight oats even. Uh, that would be amazing also. So many things you can do with apple compote other than just spoon it straight from the jar um, into your yogurt. But without further ado, it's time to try. Now, I'd love to put this on some ice cream with a little caramel sauce, but this is going in my apple cinnamon rolls and I am so excited about them. So I'm going to um, contain myself. Here we go. Mm. It's sweet. The apples are soft and tender, but still have a little bit of crunch to them. And that there's like a rich cinnamon syrup and like a little bit of molasses flavor from the dark brown sugar that we used. It is like super decadent, but still easy enough to pull together in a large batch to use in your breakfast or desserts or even just with a side of cake um, or pumpkin bread. So delicious, so versatile. Um, you should just make a huge batch when you have all the apples from your apple picking. Yeah, fall is the best.